By this stage, you may have noticed the pixel streaming toolbar at the top. This is a fantastic element we've incorporated into Unreal Engine that allows you to run a few pixel streaming commands from within Unreal. For example, we've included an internal signaling server, so you don't need to run one externally. As shown in the previous videos, we tend to run signaling servers separately from the engine. However, with this here, you can run an internal one. Note that this isn't intended for packaged projects, but just for quick testing within the editor. Let's go through the options in the toolbar now. At the top here, you can see Use Remote Signaling Server. What this will do is if you toggle this on, whenever you launch any of the pixel streaming elements in editor, it will try and use an external signaling server. So say for example in the previous videos we were using the run local script to run an external signaling server. If you have this enabled, it will connect to an external one, such as the one we used previously. If you have it disabled, it will try and use the internal one. Moving down, you can see launch signaling server. If we enable this, you can see now that it's now got a signaling server running internally. The internal signaling server will not open a terminal window like the normal signaling server. However, you can still see its output if you look down at the output log for UE. You can see here that it started the server. To demonstrate this is working, let's start a standalone game again in editor and show the connection. So we run in standalone. Now that that's running, we can see the output log connected to streamer. So now if we open a browser and we enter our usual 127.0.0.1, we can now connect to that stream. So this is the standalone game running on the internal signaling server all within UE. Fantastic. So moving back to the editor, we'll close this stream and have a look at some of the other options. So we'll stop the signaling server here and have a look. So we'll cover level editor and full editor streaming in the next video as that is subject to change and we may need to replace that video in future. Let's have a quick look at these codec settings at the bottom. What this does is specify the encoder you want your pixel stream to run in. By default, this uses hardware encoder H.264, but you can change it to VP8 and VP9, which are both software encoders. These all function a little differently and have their own pros and cons. I'll link information about these from the official UE docs in the description below. Before we move on, let's cover these last two customization options for the internal signaling servers. We can also specify which port, so namely streamer port and viewer port, and as you might assume from the names, of course, uh, one is the streamer, such as the standalone game, and the viewer port, the connected peers. The best part of this is if you change these. So if we make this, for example, uh, 8989, and we make this 82, and launch that, it will show you what you need to use to connect. So you can enter any of these values in your browser that will connect to the signaling server. Very helpful. I'd like to highlight the importance of this section if you're running on UE Linux. On Linux, the Unreal Editor is unable to open ports below 1000, so instead of the viewer port defaulting to 80, it defaults to 8080. So, always refer to this list to check which port you need to connect to. When you connect via browser, you will need to manually add the port at the end. As you can see here, colon 82, connect. Beautiful. So always refer to these URLs here. With that covered, Let's move on to the next video where we'll go over editor streaming.